Stone family. Thank you guys so much for logging in today. We want to say welcome and thank you for logging in. You guys have chosen a really awesome place to be today because we are what, Emery? Gonna have some church tonight. <laughs> That's right. We're gonna have some church and we are excited that you are with us. One really awesome way for you guys to participate and to be engaged with us is to like and to comment below. Leave us an emoji. What's your favorite emoji? For sure, the heart emoji. The heart emoji, mine's a smiley face. So leave us some hearts, leave us some, leave us some smiley faces, let us know where you're watching from, say hello to us, we're so excited to hear from you. And also, before we let you go, make sure that you guys text the word loop to our phone number which is 509-309-0993. Make sure to go take Sloop to that number. That's right, text Sloop to that number. If this girl can get it, so can you. So text that number. Also, we have one more message for parents. What's that message? Hey parents, please like and share our Cornerstone Kids Facebook page to keep your kid connected. That's right, let's do that parents. So let's get ready guys, get your favorite seat, get your favorite drink, get your favorite kid. Just kidding, <laughs> they're all my favorite. But let's have a really good time and have some church today. Share this message, let everybody know Cornerstone is on and we are ready to go. Bless you guys.
out for me. Joy is for me. Peace is for me. It all belongs to me. What he provided, I'm standing on his word. I'm not going to be moved. Because you serve a promise keeper. Put your hands together. You know you serve a promise keeper. He keeps his word and his promises. And no matter what it looks like, I can declare that yes, I will. I have a yes in my spirit to praise him anyway. Lift your hands this morning. Hallelujah. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never laid is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. Oh, if you believe that, child. If you believe that, child, yes. Yes, God, I'll not be moved. Hallelujah. Say it again. On one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. Same God, the same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things.
Jesus, the name that is above every name. That name has power to heal. That name has power to set free and to deliver. That name you can call on even in your darkest hour. Peace. peace. Bring it all to peace. The storm. The storm surrounding me. Let it break. Let it break. At your name. At your name still. Call the sea to still, the rage in me to still, every wave at your name. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence me. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Breathe, call these folks to live, call these lungs to sing once again. I will pray in the name Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus. Jesus, you silence me, oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble, you make the darkness tremble. Your name, your name cannot be 
somebody needs that name, lift your hands in this place this morning. Jesus, Jesus. I don't care if you called on any other names. This morning, that name will change Jesus, every situation in your Jesus. life. That name will change the course of your life. It will Jesus, shift things. It will cause high Jesus. things to come down, low things to come up, crooked places to be made straight. Jesus, Jesus. We just call the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for your name. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, God. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, I want to say the name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. the Lord God who's mighty in battle. We've already won. We've already won. Because of you, God. Hallelujah. None like you, oh God. Woo. Get a more shot. Hey. hey, God, we thank you. We'll bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Oh.
Exodus 25. If you brought a pen, take down some notes here. If not, you can watch this on YouTube Live. We welcome our our live group out there and those of you that are watching by Spirit Word all around the world. We thank you for tuning in to what God has to say. I'm going to teach a little bit on a place called there. A place called there. Okay? Exodus 25, 10 through 22. And they shall make an ark of acacia wood. Two and a half cubits shall be its length, a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height. And you shall overlay it with pure gold inside and out, and you shall overlay it of, uh, with gold. And put them in four corners. Two rings shall be on one side and two rings on the other side. And you shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. And you shall put the poles into the rings um, the rings on the sides of the ark, and the ark may be carried by them. The poles shall be, um, or, or excuse me, the poles shall be in the rings of the ark, and they shall not be taken from it. And you shall put um, into the ark of the testimony which I will give you, and you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length, and, and a cubit and a half its width. And you shall make two cherubims, two angels, two cherubims of gold, of hammered, um, of hammered work, you shall uh, make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherubim at one end and the other cherubim on the other. And you shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it in one piece. With the mercy seat and the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. And the faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. And you shall put the mercy seat um, on top of the ark and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you and there I will meet with you and there I will meet with you and there I will meet with you there's a place called there and there I will meet with you Moses and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubims which are on the ark of the testimony about everything which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. God says, I want you to make a box, and in this box, on top of it, I want you to make a mercy seat, Then I want you to make cherubims, because everything that I show you is going to be a replica of what is real in heaven. So I need you to make two angels, they're going to face each other, and then that's going to be, and then above the mercy seat, I'm going to come, and I'm going to meet with you between the faces of the cherubim. I'm going to come meet with you and commune with you. That's where I'm going to meet with you, right there. In that place, nowhere else, but there. I'm going to speak to you, and you can speak to me. That's where I'll sing to you, and you sing to me. Where? In the place of where the cherubims are, where the angels are. It's where the realms of glory are. That's where my presence is. I choose to abide there. And that's where I'm going to meet with you. Above the mercy seat. Because everything God does is with mercy. Amen. And we're going to see that here in a minute. And I want, to sh I, want to, I want to destroy the paradigm of religion that's still on us after 20, 30 years. After 10 years or 5 years, after 50 years. Because what keeps us from the presence of God, what keeps you from prayer, what keeps you from, from, from devotion, okay, what keeps you away, it's not just that we're busy, it's that we're condemned. In some way or another, we're condemned. Okay? We're condemned and we don't feel worthy to come into his presence. Somehow we still feel like we have to do good to be good so that we can enter his presence. And if we do that, then God's going to be okay and then he'll hear us. Listen to me. God hears you. Okay? He hears you. He hears you when you say bad. He hears you when you do good. He hears you. And he's cool, he's cool with you. But in his presence... What, what happens is it gets you to a point where you, everything melts like wax at his presence. And so you cannot be afraid. Listen to me. You cannot be afraid of his presence. So let me, let me, let me slow down here because everything in me wants to impart. I'm going to impart to you my lifestyle. So whether I'm in Africa, whether I'm in Mexico, whether I'm here at the church, whether I'm in my car, whether I'm in my home, on my desk, Downstairs in my hot tub. Doesn't matter. I invoke heaven now. 
because I understand that I'm in Christ and in Christ there's no condemnation. So I can approach his throne anytime I, I want to. I'm going to tear down some idols. I'm going to tear down some mindsets today. My whole intention is to get you to be a worshiper. Okay? If you're a worshiper, you'll be healed. If you're a worshiper, you'll be restored. If you're a worshiper, everything you need is not in me saying it or doing it. It's in you understanding who it is that you worship. And the one that you worship is bigger and will swallow up your sickness. He will swallow up your dilemma and your problem or whatever it is. You got to make God bigger than your problem. There is a Christ for a crisis. And believe it or not, we are all in it or eventually will fall into it. All of us, we will not escape it. But there is a place called there. I'm not mad, but I'm tired of the Christians that are being around 20, 30, 40 years and can't got a devotion no more. They don't got no, they lost it. Like, like worship is part of a service. I know preachers, preachers that won't even come out to worship. They're just going to get out there when it's time for them to preach. When was worship about you? Worship was never about you, man of God. Worship was never about you, woman of God. Worship was about God. And that God is deserved to be worshipped. Because he alone is God. So I'm just setting some things in order. So I wanted all the kids to come in here. Because, because I want to set some things straight. If you can get this at 8, 10, 12, 15, 16. I'm telling you that you can enter his presence. It's, you don't have to be 18 to enter his presence. It just the access and the passport is that you're first of all born again. Second of all, is that you have the spirit of God in you. Third of all, is that you operate in the faith he gave you. You are not from beneath, Jesus said. He told the Pharisees they were from beneath. And he goes, I'm from above. But when you're born again, Peter says, you're born from above. If you're born from above, then God can speak to you from above the mercy seat. Mercy is a $25 word for forgiveness. At some point in your Christian life, you better understand that it's not about sin anymore. Stop it. Quit it. Knock it off. It's not about the sins of your forefathers. Quit it. Stop it. Knock it off. Get in Christ. He's the only father you got in this new creation. And he has no genealogy, therefore there's no curses. Stop it. See, I told you I was going to mess with people. Okay, get in his presence. You're an agent of his presence. You have the passport of life. You can enter in. So before I get to preaching, Jesus, Matthew, stop it. It's hard being me sometimes. But you, when you pray, not if you pray, when you pray, not if, when, if you're a Christian and you don't pray, Start. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When you close the door. Okay? That doesn't mean you get in I've heard all kinds of stuff. You go find a place, you go shut the door, and you shut your... Okay, that's cool if you do that. But that even can be legalistic. I found that I can shut the door whether I'm at the doctor's office, whether I'm watching football, whether I am in my hot tub, whether I am at church right here. Listen, when we come into this place, this becomes a holy, merciful place where we can encounter God together. We become one corporate man in the earth where we lift up the name of Jesus and Jesus comes and he speaks to us and you speak to him where he sings to you and you sing to him and we should expect experience the presence of God and sickness has to melt and everything around you has to melt because everything in his presence begins to melt like wax at the presence of a living God somebody in here say yeah
So when you pray in secret to the God in the secret place, he rewards you openly. Let me go on. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Just write this down. Look up here. Write this down. The secret things belong to the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed, okay, that means if you ever find the secret place, God is always going to uncover himself and reveal himself to you. He will give you a revelation. He will reveal revelation. He, he's going to reveal to you so that you can honestly, so that you can discover and recover. Okay? He uncovers and reveals to you. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but to those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever. Okay, over here. Gloria. Gloria a Dios. Listen to me. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which God reveals belongs to you and your children forever. That we may do all of God's word. Isn't that crazy? Amos. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. John 15, New Testament. You didn't think I was going to get there. New Testament. John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. That means if you're a doer of the word, you become his friend. If you're just a hearer, you're still a servant. One more time. If you become a hearer and a doer, you become not only a son. Listen to me. You become a friend. We are the friend of God. We can sing it, but we have to begin to do what we're hearing. Not in condemnation. I'm just trying to get somebody to, let's go. Because the great commission isn't come. The great commission is go. Right? So in Amos, it says he does nothing until he releases, he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets, servants, the prophets, the servants, the prophets in the New Testament. Check this out. He says, you are my friends and whatever I commit. It says, no longer do I call you servants for a servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father. I have made known unto you where in a secret place. Anything you ever need to know is found in the secret place. The secrets belong to the Lord and then to whoever whoever has the audacity to seek him. The secret to the prophetic ministry, I'm going to tell you, I tell everybody, every prophet is like, oh man, you you came out as a prophet from the womb of your mother and da 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 And I'm thinking, you know, but I had also the audacity to seek God. Yes, I have had encounters, and yes, I've had visitations, and I've, yes, I've, but at the same time, it's the, the, the whole thing is so that I can get hungry and thirsty enough that I may be filled in righteousness in his presence. How in the world, come on, can I have something to say and something to do if I've never heard from him? And so I have learned it in my walk. Come on, this walk of the Spirit is a life of the Spirit. Galatians 5, if you're going to walk in the fruit of the Spirit and you're going to be in the Spirit, you have to live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. That means there's a lifestyle of being in His presence. And nobody wants to talk about this because it's not people popular. We want to talk about promise, promise. But I'm telling you, he's the promise keeper. I'm just saying, change your focus on his presence. And if you have a devotion, hallelujah, praise God. But you can have a devotion without being legalistic. For years, I had a legalistic relationship with God. I meet him at a certain time. And I'm not saying, if you still do that, I think that's great. But now I'm spontaneous. When my wife gets spontaneous with me and wants to kissy, kissy, lovey, lovey, huggy, huggy, I like that. <laughs> like right now? Right here? Because? That's what God is saying. 
He's saying, you want to kiss me? You want a huggy hug? Love? Oh, you want a word? You want me to give that to you? Oh, you want some, huh? Am I too real? It's like right now, right here, in the middle of Monday night football? You, you not, don't want to watch your game first? No, I want to tell you how awesome you are. I'm going to tell you how much I love you and how awesome and great you are. I know I'm going through a storm. I know I'm going through this trial. But God, I'm telling you that no weapon formed against me can prosper. I know that by your stripes, I'm healed, God. And I come to bow at your presence because in your presence, you're filling me when I'm empty. When I'm down, you pick me up. When I'm out, you bring me in simply because I worship you. Daniel ch chapter 2, let me give you a storyline. Now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar, reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the command to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans to tell the king his dream. So they came and they stood before the king. And the king said to them, I have had a dream and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. And the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we will give you the interpretation. And the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, my decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made of ash heaps. However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. They answered again and said, let the king tell his servant the dream and we will give its interpretation. And the king answered and said, I know for certain that you would gain time. Because you see that my decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me, there is only one decree for you. For you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the time has changed. Therefore, therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that you can give me its interpretation. And the Chaldeans answered and the king uh, the king and said, there is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. Are you getting the picture? And it, says, it goes on to say, it is difficult, it's a difficult thing that the king requests, and there is no other who can tell it to the king except the God who dwells not with flesh. For this reason, the king was angry and very furious and gave the command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon so that the decree went out and they began killing the wise men and they sought Daniel and his companions, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, to kill them. Then with counsel and, and wisdom, Daniel answered Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out, check this out, who'd gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon, he answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree from the king so urgent? Arioch made the decision known to Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went into his house and made the decision known to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and his companions that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven. Where? Mercies? Whoa, where, where's mercies? between the faces of the cherubim above it that's where God meets mm -hmm. so he's going to go seek mercies did you get that he's going to seek mercies so it says right here uh, la, 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 la. then Daniel, Daniel went to his house made the decision on the, blah, 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 concerning the secrets that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men in Babylon then the secret then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night vision the secret was revealed because Daniel sought the Lord so Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons and he removes kings and raises the kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in darkness and light dwells in him. What are you trying to say? I'm saying anytime that you seek God, God will reveal the secret. The secret of the prophetic is that you seek the Lord. The 
That's why prophecy, the gift of prophecy, is the only one you can't fake. What are you saying, fake? Yeah, you don't have to live right, honestly, to operate in any of the other gifts. You can have a gift of faith and still be an alcoholic. A lot of, a lot of the revivalists were alcoholics. I don't want to mention their name because it just ruins it for everything. They had problems. They had problems. So you don't have to live right. You don't have to have a devotional life to operate in the gift of miracles or gifts of healing. Wow, I didn't know that, really. No, no, you don't. But prophecy you do because it's the testimony of Jesus Christ. You have to live right. That's why most prophets do not prophesy. They operate more in the word of wisdom or word of knowledge because they lost devotion. See, I make prophets nervous because at some point we have to get it back on our knees, get back to simple simplistics, get back to basics, wax off, wax on, paint the fence, paint it on. Just, just, I'm just saying, we got to come back to basics. It's so, it's so simple, we make it profound. No, it's simple. Got to give God what belongs to God. And that's our worship. It's my praise. Don't ever lose that. Don't ever lose your devotion. And you can have your devotion whether you're driving down the, the road. I, 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 I pray. This is what I'm, I'm going to make a decree. You, you do whatever you want with it. Make a decree for a month till the end of the year. Quit listening to that radio. Christian radio is not that great either. This theology is horrible, most of it. Okay? But can you, like, get in the presence of God in your car without getting in a wreck? And you get pulled over because you're drunk in the spirit? I make a, I mean, we're, we fast radio. And what we're going to do is we're going to eat and drink God, Holy Ghost, the Son. We're going to de- drink his word. Come on, I, I, I make a decree today. That's what we do. Why? And we're going to enter the secret place because if we enter the secret place, we're going to start seeing God openly reward the children of God who seek them. He rewards them who diligently seek him. Not seek things, not seek the church, not seek promises, but seek him. He's the promise keeper. To get that. Revelations 1. Check this out. Revelations 1. I'm going to skip Daniel 2, 46. Revelations 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show the servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. For the time is near, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. Throne. Mercy seat. Was a throne seat. A mercy seat for somebody to sit on. God would sit on that and he would commune and speak and sing to Moses. God forever sits because he finished his work. And the Bible says he forever sits on the throne at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you. Intercession, prayer, is not a calling. I'm going to smack this right in the face of people. It's not a calling. Oh, you are called to pray. No, 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 no. Prayer and intercession and declaration and prophecy and decrees. Listen to me. Those are a discipline. I'm tired of lazy Christians. And I'm not telling anybody here lazy. But if the shoe fits. That's all I'm saying. It's a discipline. It's not a calling. Well, there's a grace. No, no, no. There's grace on all people. Not if you pray, when you pray. Come on. 
there's one thing if you know about me, more than me preaching, more than me prophesying. You know what you'll see? You, 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 my wife can vest. You know, all the people that's ever lived with me can testify. You know what? You'll hear me. You'll, feel, you'll, 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 always, you'll always see me at certain hours of the day when God wakes me up to seek him. I'm a God seeker at the end of the day. Call me what you want. When I come in the pearly gates and I come in as a sheep, he's going to go, you're a God seeker. I can do what I do because of God, not because of Joey. Joey is no good. And it's because years ago, I used to hear my mom and dad, and, you know, in her little broken English, and their brother, and they would call out, washing dishes as they, she did clothes and iron, and she did everything. It was, uh, there was a continual residual presence, a residue that constantly I remember. And I thought, my God, the secrets, of the, the secrets belong to the Lord and to whom he reveals it. And they belong to the children and to their children's children forever. That's what we give back to God. Show me somebody who is a worshiper. I'll show you somebody who's not stingy with their money, with their time, with their talent. But show me a stingy person with their treasure. I'll show you somebody who's stingy with God. They're correlated. Okay. Okay. So revelations. You're doing all right? I'm cutting you on purpose. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. For the time is near. John, to the seven churches of Asia, grace to you and peace from, the, from him who is and who was and who is to come from the seven spirits that are before the throne. And after these things, Revelation 4, 1. After these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. That's the cross. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the open door. He allows the open door to be open so that you can come in. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here. You got to come up to a whole nother level. And I will show you things which must take place after this. You got to come from above. You got to come to the mercy seat. To the place where there's no condemnation. To the place where there's no shame. To the place where there's no chaos. To the place where there's no sickness. To the place where there's no poverty. I need to bring you up higher, John. Come up higher. Come up hither. Come up to this place. Because I want to show you some secrets. Did you get that? So he says, immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne set up in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like Jasper and Sardia stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 uh, uh, white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from, their, um, it, it, and from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, seven lamps a fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, they were a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. And the first living creature was like a lion. The second living fourth was a creature was like an eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around. Does it sound like Isaiah chapter 6? So in the presence of God, what I'm trying to say is that there's angels... Like ministers of flame of fire. There's like fire. They're constantly, they're not sitting. Angels don't sit. They stand. And they're waiting, just waiting around the the presence of God. Waiting for you to get in the presence so that you can employ them. There's too many unemployed angels. What we do is we have, we spend more time binding spirits. Instead of lucid angels. And let me tell you, there's two times more angels than there are demons. To every demon you are seeing, you should be seeing two angels. And if you're not, that's just a vain imagination. 
I'm not mad. I'm just tired of really spooky spiritual Christians that never have a presence but want to act like they're spiritual. And I'm tired of that. Either you got presence or you don't got presence. You either got power or you don't got power. Either you got power to cast out a devil or you don't have power. I'm not mad. I just want people to get this. Hey, let me read. And in the midst of the throne, and around the throne, there were four living creatures, the full of eyes. And it goes on to say, the four living creatures, and each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things and by you you will exist and all things were created because of you this is the problem though in the year that King Uzziah died Isaiah 6 he said I saw also the Lord sitting on the throne high and lifted up now it's Isaiah John saw it Moses saw it Ezekiel saw it here Isaiah says, he was sitting on the throne high and lifted up in the train of his robe. It filled the temple. Above it stood seraphims. There it is. Each one having six wings. And with two he covered his face. And with two he covered his feet. And with two he did fly. And one cried to another, said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me. This is most Christians when they enter the presence of God. Woe is me. I neglected to be here in this place because I'm a man of unclean lips among a people of unclean lips, and it's kept me from your presence. And God is saying, Right here. So I said, woe is me for I'm undone because I'm a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king and the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphims, because God the Father said, hey, go take care of this problem. And he said, he flew to me having his hand a live coal which had taken with the tongues from the altar, which is the brazen altar, which by the way is the cross. The cross took away your reproach, took away your sin, took away your iniquity, took away your transgression. You have a right to be in the presence of God as a son, as a friend, as a servant that will serve the living God. There you sing to him. There you speak to him. There you praise him. There you worship him. There you acknowledge him. There you glorify him. There you, you esteem him and you lift him up far above anything, above anything that is a circumstance or a dilemma or a problem or a sickness or a poverty in your life. And it is there where you lift him high above principalities and high above powers and higher above rulers and higher above witches and higher above curses and higher than above anything that, you, that would try to keep you down. And you lift him higher. So it's about presence. And I saw on the right hand, Revelations 5, and I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside, and on the back, sealed with seven seals, and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much. This is John, because no one was found worthy to open, to read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep, John. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, Jesus, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the seven seals. And I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures. And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, Woo! stood a lamb 
as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and he took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a heart and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. I'm just doing a little bit of reading. So I can get you guys to understand. And then it goes on to say, then I looked and I heard the voices of many angels around the throne. What I'm trying to get you to know is that around the throne of God, in the presence of God, there is a throne called the mercy seat. It's the throne of grace. It's the mercy seat where angels upon angels. In fact, let's read it real quick. Let's read it real quick. It says right here, and the living creatures and the elders and the number of them, of the angels, were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of a thousand, saying with a loud voice, worthy is a lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Wow. You say, you are crazy. Yes. I just want people to get this because in the throne room of God, there's angels all around waiting for you to understand that there is nothing blocking you from the throne of his grace. There is no malady. There is no sin. There is no sickness. There is no poverty. There is no my only that keeps you in here is you. There's not a devil that can keep you from coming in. You can come boldly to the throne of grace when you understand what Jesus did for his people. Jesus died on a cross. He shed his blood to redeem you. He removed your sin once and for all so that you can come, run, walk, skip, do cartwheels into the presence of God. Do it how you want. But there is a presence for the people of God that when you enter his presence, ah, there you will see that there you can give him honor there you can give him blessing there you can give him riches there you can give him all that you have all that you are simply because he is the God Hebrews 4 I'm almost done I'm creating a secret place A secret place. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden in his sight. But all things are naked. Open to his eyes of him whom we must give account. Who do you think you are thinking you can hide from the living God? Are you kidding me? Like he don't know. Well, pastor, I I still smoke a little bit of weed. Like he doesn't know. Keeping away from God isn't going to deliver you. It's you understanding that I can come to him. That you stay long enough in his presence. Where you won't desire to smoke any weed. You will desire to be in his presence. And when you stay there long enough. He'll deliver you of your crap. He'll deliver you of your addiction. He'll deliver you of your anger. He'll deliver you of your bitterness. He'll deliver you of your problem. Because he is God. No, you need a good dose of his presence. Yeah, but you know, no, 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 no. You need a good dose of the Holy Ghost in his presence. I've sat there long enough. He will deliver you of your pain. He'll deliver you of your heartache. He'll deliver you of your problem. He'll deliver you of your diabetes. He'll deliver you of your sickness. He'll deliver you of your disease if you stay there long enough. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. 
For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet he was without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The reason why he removed the sin is so that he can, you can come boldly and remove all of your junk. It's not a closed door. The cross was an open door for you to come boldly into the throne of his grace, to enter his presence any time you wanted to. Jesus was tempted in all manners as we were. He knows your pain, but he was found without sin. This is why he's the high priest. And he's saying, man, I got, don't go away. See, condemnation drives you away from him. Shame drives you away. Religion drives you away. Fear drives you away. Truth brings you in. There's a pulmonary pull, a magnetic force that gets you to a point of it. I'm just, I'm coming back to basics. That God is big enough to handle it. I don't care how big your problem is. God is bigger than your problem. And your sickness. And he's bigger than your attitude too. And he's bigger than all of your motives. He's bigger than your, your money problems. He's bigger than your daddy issues. Your mammy issues. You don't like authority. He's got, he understands that too. You need a good dose of the Holy Ghost in his presence. Everything starts melting like wax. I don't get away with too much. Holy Ghost convicts. Then I got to get back in the secret place. Okay, sorry. And he goes, oh, no, no, you're here. When you're here, there's no wrong. Let me touch your lips. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's why I can worship the way I can. Ah, I'm naked before you, God. Ah, I worship you. I'm standing here only because you made a way. Zechariah 2.13. And the Amplified. I'm almost done. Be still, all flesh, before the Lord, for he's aroused and risen from his holy habitation. Zechariah 3, 1. Then the guiding angel showing me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at Joshua's right hand to be his adversary and to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, O Satan, even the Lord, who now and habitually chooses Jerusalem, rebukes you. Is not this returned captive Joshua a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel of the Lord. And he spoke to those who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And he said to Joshua, behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you and I will clothe you with rich apparel. And Zechariah said, and Zechariah said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with rich garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord solemnly and earnestly protested and affirmed to Joshua saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways. What ways? The way. Moses, the way. Is that if you ever come. Anywhere you're at, if you come to the place called there, in my presence, I will meet you there, I will commune with you there, and there I will release to you the secrets you need. That's the way. Whew. He says, keep my ways and keep my charge. Then also you shall rule my house and have charge of my courts and I will give you access to my presence and places to walk among these who stand here. Who's standing here? 
the angels that are standing in his presence. You can do a whole lot with your prayers. You can do a whole lot by yourself, but God never intended for you to do stuff by yourself. David's mighty men killed a whole lot of men. One angel, when God said go, killed 184,000 people in one time. You can lift your weights. You can do that. Or you can come in his presence and let the Lord fight with you because he's the Lord of hosts. My warfare is my worship. It's not me screaming at the devil. It's not me dealing with curses. A curse without a cause is to no avail. Try to curse me when I'm in his presence. You can't. I'm in Christ. How can Christ be cursed? Yeah, 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 I can hear it. Yeah, 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 but what? Yeah, get your butt out of the way. That's the problem. You're jacked up. You're jacked up. You're jacked up because we need presence. This is the antidote. Commune. Communion. It's all about bread and wine and presence. Okay. Hebrews 1 and I close. Two more scriptures. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son today. I have begotten you, established you in an official sonship relation with kingly dignity. And again, I will be to him a father and he will be to me a son. Moreover, when he brings the firstborn son again into the habit, habitable world, the habitable world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Referring to the angels, he says, God who makes his angels winds and his ministering servants flames of fire. But as to the son, he says to him, your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever to the ages of the ages and the scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of righteousness and God in his presence will give to you a scepter and point it at you and it's the scepter of righteousness that you're in right standing with him and when you're in right standing you now take the scepter of the kingdom and there you release your decrees and there you release your intercessions and it is there you release your prayer it is there you release your worship it is there where you release your praise it is there where you release your shout it is there where you release your dance and you can stop you can clap you can stop you can clap you can shout do whatever it takes in the presence <clears throat> Remember when Jesus is in the book of Revelation and his eyes are like a flame of fire? It's because he's standing in the midst of the candlestick, but yet there's a, there's, there's a, there's a crystal, the lake of crystal that is crystal clear. And it's the angels that are standing, that are ministering spirits of fire. So when you're looking at Jesus and you look at his eyes and they're reflecting on the crystal sea, you're seeing the angels like a flame of fire in Jesus' eyes. That when you see Jesus' eyes, they're full of angelic hosts because he's the Lord of the hosts. That when you seek him, you seek him. And guess what? You get the Lord, you get the Lord of hosts. Angels that will be employed simply when you understand his presence. The angels of God are waiting for you to get this message. You mean to tell me I can make any place a presence? Absolutely. You can make anywhere, anyhow, a secret place. I have made it in the middle of a potholes. I could tell you stories when I was stuck and I was driving in the middle of dark and didn't know where I was going, but I needed to be at that launch. And I got down in my boat, brand new boat, and I said, God, I'm gonna close my eyes. Because in my own strength, I can't see where I need to go because everything looks the same. And at night, it really looks the same. But I'm going to close my eyes and I choose to enter a secret place. And I look at you, Jesus, and I worship you. I worship you. I glorify you as I got that full throttle. 
And when the Holy Spirit said turn left, I turn left. When he said turn right, I said turn right. When he said turn left, turn left. When he said open my eyes, I was at the I was at the launch. When you don't know what to do, I'm telling you, close your eyes and seek the Lord. And he will always make a way where there seems to be no way. God will always bring forth a deliverance in the middle of your hard place. In the middle of your dark place. In the middle of destruction. God is able to raise you up from the heap if you become a God chaser and a God seeker. And I'm telling you that Cornerstone Church, we're a bunch of God seekers and God chasers. Seek God. We will we will seek after the Lord. We will worship God wholeheartedly. We will lift up a praise in this house. Psalms 91. That's only 829. Psalms 91 is a psalm that Moses wrote, not David. I said Moses wrote it, not David. Moses. And Moses said, I got this. It took me, it took me 80 years to figure it out. Because if you read chapter 90, Moses wrote that too. Moses wrote that at 90 years of age, or excuse me, at at 80 years of age when he thought the end of his life was there. And if you read Psalms 90, it's a doom and gloom portion of chapter of scripture that Moses didn't get it. But somewhere between 80 and 120, Moses is 120 when he writes Psalms 91. There's a lot of years there. Somehow he discovered something and he says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence and He shall cover me with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and my butler and you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence my God that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall to my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me, near you, near us. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent and you shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me upon you upon us and therefore i will deliver him and i will set him on high because he has known my name and he shall call upon me and i will answer him and i will be with him in trouble and i will deliver him and honor him with long life will i satisfy him and show him my salvation somebody get on your feet and give god a praise for the next 10 minutes I charge you, find the worshiper on this inside of you. Some of you, you can make your secret place where you're at. Some of you have got to make a declaration and get up out of your seat and say, I'm going to come near here somewhere. I'm going to find a secret place right here, a thin place where I give God a recommitment. Some of you need to cut a fresh covenant with God because you lost your devotion. For whatever reason, circumstances were hard. Things were difficult. I get it. Busyness. 
that God touch you with the coal of fire and say, come on, recommit, rededicate. I've been wanting you to come in because I want you to employ angels. You wanted to see things move in your life, but I need you to come into my presence. You'll see that I'm the promise keeper. You'll see that I'm the one that keeps the promises, but I need you to come boldly to the throne of grace. I need you to come secretly seeking me that I may reveal my secrets so that your secrets can be revealed to you, your children, and your children's children forever. So let's sing that one more time. If I can have the singers come up. Miriam, if I can have you come up. Different ones. Wherever you're at, come on, let's sing. The glory is so beautiful. You got to close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Hey guys, another way to stay connected and to participate at Cornerstone Church Tri-Cities is through our giving. There's three really simple ways that we give at Cornerstone. The first one is through the Church Center app. It's a free app that you can download. Once you've downloaded it, you'll type in Cornerstone Church Tri-Cities and it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your account. The other option is through text to give. What you'll do is you'll type in the dollar amount that you would like to give and you'll send it to the number 84321. It will also give you really simple instructions on how to set up your account if you don't have one already. That is my personal favorite way to give. And as always, we do accept check or cash that can be mailed to the Cornerstone offices at 3315 West Court Street in Pasco. I want to encourage you guys to please stay faithful in your giving through this season. God has been faithful to us, and it's important for us to stay faithful to Him and to the house in order for us to bless others. Don't forget to give today. God bless you. See you soon. What's up, family? I hope you guys enjoyed that service today. I hope you guys were blessed as much as I was. Hey, just want to give you guys a reminder. We have weekly services. We have Sunday at 9 a.m. and then at 11 a.m. as well as Wednesdays we have it at 7 p.m. so just remember get online through Facebook or YouTube stay connected stay contact with us and stay blessed we'll talk to you guys soon